Seaside Clovers, it's 25 Days of Disney. I'm Amanda. I'm Jennifer. And we're going to have some special guests here today. Yes. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a mouse. Be a man. We must be swift as a cool sing. Be a man. With all the force of a great typhoon. Be a man. With all the strength of a raging fire. Mysterious as the dark side of the moon. Please welcome. As you can see, we've got empty seats, and we're gonna add some people. In three, two, one. Hey guys! Hi. Hey guys! Howdy. Thanks where's, for joining us. Where's Brian? Where's Where's Brian? He's in his own little world. I don't even know what happened. Did um, he take a wrong turn? Did he get portaled to the wrong area? Hello. He might have gotten hit by Garnet. Brian. Hello. Brian. Brian, is that you? Brian. Follow the sound of my voice. Brian. Hey, it's Brent. I was locked in your bathroom. Why is it when you ever do the snap thing, it doesn't work for me? I don't know. Last year I hit my head. <laughs> okay. Sorry? Maybe, maybe the hole's the just too response. small for you. We don't have strong enough snaps. We're missing the gauntlet. Mm. So we're going to talk about the 2019 Disney box office. In case you can't tell. Mm-hmm. That there was a lot of box office hits. We got some good things coming in. Disney Scored was some busy. money. Disney was uh, busy this year. Mm hmm. 40%. Yeah, 40%, Brian. The first yeah, so because this months. article is dated October 17th, so this is up the whole year through October. So far in 2019, Disney films have sold more than 8.1 billion in tickets. And as we're talking about this, Frozen 2 has not yet come out. I can't wait. At the time mm -hmm. we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. Or Star Wars has not come out either. Or Star nope. Wars. Right, and so that actually is talked about that, you know, they've gotten this much of a success so far when those big box office hits that have been very right. anticipated haven't even come out yet. Right. With, the, with these numbers. At that time, too, Mal uh, Maleficent, the second film, oh, also yes. didn't come out. So they are saying that the company has generated $2.7 billion um, domestically and has not yet released their three big title films, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, Frozen 2, and then Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And it uh, looks like five of the top ten have all been, five of the top ten movies from January till September have been all Disney movies, um, which it's not including Spider-Man: Far From Home, even though it was in, it's in the Marvel, it's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's still a Sony-produced movie. Uh, then we have It Chapter Two, who's not a part of it. Us, Hobbs and Shaw, and John Wick Chapter Three. Mm -hmm. And that's the top ten highest-grossing films mm -hmm. from January through September. Avengers: Endgame, and then The Lion King, mm -hmm. Toy Story Four, Captain Marvel. Spider-Man Far From Home, Aladdin, It Chapter 2, Us, Hobbs and Shaw, John Wick Chapter 3. So those are going to be those top highest grossing films for this year. But then if you look at studio-wise for the box office market, we have Disney's at 33.4%, Sony is at 11.14%, Warner Brothers, 13.39. Universal, 15.09%. And then Other is 26.98. So out of all, this made, at least all the major studios, Disney was the top one for between January and September. Mm-hmm. The mouse is pretty big. Mm-hmm. The mouse is always big. The mouse. It's just growing. I mean, the, uh, as we discussed earlier with our summer box office one, mm -hmm. uh, the top grossing movie... For, 20, for 2019 and for all time has been Avengers Endgame. Mm -hmm. um, and that eclipses everything in the uh, grossing movies for uh, for Disney, for all the other studios. Uh, that's currently sitting at, or for, at least for September, $858.3 million. And I believe that is, the, is that worldwide? Because I'm sure, I'm sure across a billion across seas. I'm pretty sure that's just I'm pretty sure this is just in the US. So this is just in the US and I think it got to 2.7 billion dollars overseas. Oh, man. Um so once again, the Marvel movies are the top grossing for Disney and Disney is just raking all that money in 
when we have movies like The Lion King, Toy Story, uh, Land came out this year, um, and even two other Marvel movies that's considered in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the biggest movie has been Avengers. Um, there has been other movies that have been released since October and uh, since November that have probably made a little bit more money, but it's not going to eclipse anything that Disney has done. Mm -hmm. That just shows how powerful Disney actually is with the movies that they make. Okay, so there is an article that I found online that it's from Observer.com, and it just really caught my eye when we were doing research about the box office, and it's titled, Disney Isn't a Monster, It's Just the Studio Best Suited for Today's Movie Climate. A lot of people, like you were just saying, Brian, the mouse said it again, or what, how, you know, what you've been joking about, and a lot of people just say, oh, well, Disney's doing this and that, but what's going on is it's... The people have been paving the way for them, and they've just been taking and running with it. And that's what they're saying, that in reality, we are to blame. Disney isn't a monster. It's just the studio best suited to survive today's movie marketplace, an ecosystem we shaped ourselves. We are in a very different climate now than we were in the 90s or the early 2000s. Um, we, before, it was movies came out in movie theater, or it was straight to VHS or straight to DVD. Now we have the whole climate of stuff that's going in theaters, stuff that is just straight to streaming services, some that is just straight going maybe um, like online stuff. And Disney has, like all the other um, companies, they have to work with this. And sometimes what's been happening is that people say, well, there's not originality going on anymore. It's just them, you know, like cookie cutter taking that, what they've had years ago, bringing that out. But, of course Disney's going to run with that. Look what happened when they started putting out the live action. People were going like crazy to see it. They said our wallets basically did this. Mm -hmm. And so Disney, like, we helped pave that way. So the people that are complaining, it's like, well... Disney saw it was popular, so they're going with that route. They're and people's, following the money. They're following the money, and people's wallets, it's, that's, they're putting it out there. And as long as people keep going to see it. Mm -hmm. They're being smart in their business practices. Mm -hmm. Plus, they're catering to a lot of people, actually. You know, they're catering to little, little kids with Disney Junior, you know, kids in general with all their Disney animated movies, and adults with like the Marvel Cinematic Universe and other you know films that they've made you know a lot of the live action are usually catered to adults. Mm -hmm. So they are just really smart business people, and w you know we use our wallets that that makes them stronger. Mm -hmm. Right. The way that I look at this, because the article the article is correct when it's saying that it Mickey is not the mo Mickey's not the monster, Disney's not a monster, um, but it's it's a genius. Because, yes, it, there's a lot of stuff they do that they do in this that's not original. They come up with some Pixar stuff that can look original, but still has the cookie-cutter motions of it. They know how to make the movie that's going to make the most money. And that's what it comes down to, is money, it comes down to business, it comes down to marketing. Mm -hmm. Their toy sales are probably, out of, are, are probably astronomical because they come out with different variants and different versions of... Uh, Spider-Man, and they do Wally, and they do all this stuff for the stuffed animals, and um, and all these shows that they put on Netflix, and now Disney Plus, and stuff like that. When they are when they're they're basically tapped into the vein of the moviegoer when it comes down to being successful. There is a we saw um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, that's a good movie. That's actually listed in here, I think. They and about that. it didn't make even anywhere close to any sort of... It, it didn't make anywhere close. It's still a success. Mm -hmm. It still made more back its money and more. It, it wasn't even close to being a success to what these Disney movies are putting out. There anymore, but it's not what the people want to see right now at least. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a time when Disney doesn't make the money back that they want to make on these. They've, they've had their stinkers before. Mm -hmm. um, but no matter what, they've been tapping to the vein of America when it comes to movies and around mm -hmm. the world for God, probably over 100 years now. Close to it. Yeah, something like that. Um, probably around 80. 
Uh, if, if we're making that, if we're making that distinction. Snow White was the first major motion picture, hmm. and was, that was 1939. Wow. So yeah, we're, we're, we're close. First we're, full color animated movie. We're close yeah. to the bicentennial of, or not the bicentennial, the century of Disney movies, and they've only perfected their situations, especially with these Marvel movies, because. Even though they're still superhero movies, they're not the same movie over and over again. Ant-Man is a heist film. The Avengers is an epic battle film. It's a fantasy film. If we look at it, there's not elves and there's not warriors and stuff like that, but Mm -hmm. there's monsters and there's superheroes and there's a big demon that you have to fight. Mm -hmm. And then you look at something like Frozen, where uh, people are thinking it's controversial because Elsa might be... A lesbian, I don't know if that's come up still. Wait, what? If that's still a There's thing. talk about it in Frozen 2 that mm-hmm. her love interest is a woman. I haven't seen that yet. At this point in time, it hasn't come out. We don't know. They have... I haven't even seen it. They have, the, they yeah, have their is. hand on the pulse of America and, uh, and around the world because yeah. America is changing. And while it's changing, mm-hmm. Disney changing with it instead of these movies who keep making... Now, I, I'm not a, I haven't seen John Wick. I haven't oh. seen anything of it. Mm-hmm. It's a pure action film. People don't want to see pure action, though. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't want to see pure action. They want comedy. Uh, they mm-hmm. want uh, suspense, and they want romance along with their action. Mm-hmm. And Disney has perfected what they're doing with it. Yeah. And so there is a there's a paragraph in here that I definitely want to read that goes along with this. Studios have become far more economical in their big screen investments out of necessity. Background. Which also means that all of Hollywood has become far more risk adverse. New to screen concepts are incredibly difficult to launch in today's narrow, um, in today's narrow theatrical marketplace. As much as audiences decry Hollywood's lack of originality, the truth is we vote with our wallets. I made a typo. So when original and adverse um, come out, so like uh, they hate you, give book smart. Late night, all flop out. Studios get very, um, they get very skittish about ideas that aren't connecting to pre-existing properties. We can't criticize the industry while simultaneously turning our backs on the type of content we claim we crave. That's very true. People say it was a Facebook post I saw. We want something new. Okay, here's new content, but that's different than what I like. You wanted new content. Now here's the same stuff. But it's just boring. It's the same. But you didn't want the new stuff. It's like they can't win. You know, mm-hmm. some people can't win when they want to give people what they want. If they listened to each individual thing, it'd be mm-hmm. a mashup of ideas. Mm-hmm. And it would just be what they're doing. Like, Disney knows what they're doing. They know how to listen to the wallet. Mm-hmm. And what they're saying, too, is that is this, they're saying in this vacuum, Disney has emerged as the most well-equipped studio to leverage the changing viewing habits of audiences. So that's when they're also bringing in Disney+. Plus. CEO Bob Iger bought all of, like, you know, um, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilms. He bought all that stuff, too. Then there was a little 20th Century Fox. Anastasia's now a Disney princess. Yes. And so finally, and everyone deserved. would always get confused, and that would be a big argument. She wasn't a Disney princess. That's why I believe there's quite a few animators who used to work for Disney went over to DreamWorks. And DreamWorks and 20th Warner Century Bird. Fox. Yeah, DreamWorks and 20th Century Fox. Because mm-hmm. some DreamWorks pictures get confused for Disney as well. Mm-hmm. So, but box office-wise, Disney's been a giant. Even with people complaining about live action, mm-hmm. they still... Some of them made the t- this top ten, and you know, mm-hmm. we we speak with our wallets. You know, don't complain about oh Disney's taking over everything. Well, then why are you still buying Disney if you if you think it's becoming a monopoly? You know, you have mm-hmm. we have options. But and it's insane how many people they said have already the very first day Disney Plus launched on November twelfth. It was insane the numbers. Yeah, they it crashed at first. It. <laughs> Crash at first, you had a little wreck at Ralph. It was even on the news at my job. <laughs> at my day job, it was on the news. People were listening to it in the lunchroom. Do you think the mouse is going to watch these videos? Hey, mouse. I'll edit yeah. it out. I'm going to edit all the um, stuff that <laughs> So I'm looking through uh, records that Disney has sent this, uh, has set through the years, and it goes all the way back. See, 1999, 1991. Um, basically, 
this has been going on from year to year to year to year. Musical three. Oh. Musical, musical three. Um, it has I over. Don't know where to go. What's that? It has over six hundred different. Uh, it has over six hundred different records that it's set through everything, yes. um, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Again, the reason that the reason that they're able to do this is because they listen to the fans and they listen to people who like Disney movies. Thank you. They're still gonna make these movies. <laughs> I saw Avengers Endgame seven times in the theater. We know you didn't. Oh, I've, I've seen it four times. I've gone to four. Four. Three, I've only two, two, one. Yeah, I've only seen it once. <laughs> I, um, I might be going to five here soon as well. Cause so now Avengers, we did it because I, I saw the movie seven times. I saw it seven times and I saw the re-release. They, because it's a good movie, they listened to what I wanted to see. They had all the stuff that I wanted to see from Marvel. I don't go and see the animated Disney movies anymore. Or yeah. I usually don't. Um, you? The last animated Disney movie I saw in theater was Incredibles 2. Last year. And it wasn't even really that good to me. I didn't I didn't enjoy it that much. You didn't enjoy Incredibles? Not really, not Incredibles 2. Uh, we never did a we never did a review on it, but I didn't enjoy Incredibles 2. I thought it was I, I I thought it was the same thing that I saw last time. But again, that's what they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They still made money. I don't think it made as much as the first Incredibles because they, when they first made Incredibles, it was something different. Yeah. It was a family of superheroes. This one, we already know what's happening. It was cool to see them back again and mm -hmm. see a new villain. Even though I thought the villain sucked, I thought the villain was I thought the villain was terrible in that movie. I thought it was going to be Underminer. I was hoping it was Underminer. I was too. Um, it ended the first one like that. And very disappointing. They, they what what Disney likes to do is they like to switch some stuff around. Yeah. Like no matter what Toy Story is still going to be Toy Story, you can watch the first one and still know it's going to happen in the fourth one. Pretty even much. though I didn't see the fourth one. Um, cars is, Cars thing. is the same thing. Uh, even though the second one, they tried doing something different and it failed bad. Um, Disney knows what they're doing. Yeah. Other studios have no idea what they're doing. Look at what Fox was doing with the X-Men movies. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. The X-Men movies went from being awesome with X1 and X2, stinker with X3. They tried doing something different with X with uh, Wolverine Origins. They Everybody couldn't that. stand they it. Screwed it. So basically so the up. gist is that Disney found what works. Mm -hmm. We keep going and seeing it, and it's so they're money. gonna give us what they what we want. But at the same time, as they want, they want to make sure that the stuff is not flops either. Of course, Disney has stuff that comes out that are flops. So what's nice is I think a way that they're testing new content as well is through the shorts mm -hmm. that you usually see before most Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Before most Disney movies, you know those Disney Pixar shorts. Um, are a nice way to test new content and get a reaction from those and get ideas, I think, from that. Alright. Overall, Disney controlled the box office this year. Mm -hmm. they, they put out good most. usually. <laughs> and they put out good content. They put out a variety of content that's oh. not just kids' movies. Mm hmm So the mouse knows. <laughs> I wanna be where the people are. At the movies? <laughs> Let's all go Zombie to the land movies. Too. I'd probably rather go to the movies and see Okay, guys, thank you for joining us. We'll see you on our next 25 Days of Disney, which is tomorrow. See you. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed me playing with toys, give this video a thumbs up. This is the greatest show.